Well, folks, it is time to show you what may be the single most terrifying thing I ever do in my role as a quadcopter guy, and that is calibrate a current sensor. And the reason that is terrifying is that in order to calibrate a current sensor, you have to draw a lot of current through the current sensor and see if the readout is correct. And in order to draw a lot of current, the simplest thing you can do is spin the motors with the props on, which is terrifying for the reasons you can probably imagine. There certainly are other ways you could go about this. In theory, you could hook some kind of a load to the ESC uh, pads and draw current through them as if it was a motor. I could use the same 70 amp load, 60 amp load that I use for my battery testing, but I would need to solder wires to the ESC pads and you know we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna do it the simple and terrifying way. Let's hope nothing goes wrong. Uh, if I, you know, kill a puppy or chew off my face while doing this, uh, please know that I died doing what I love. <laughs> anyway, pro that probably won't happen. So you can see here that I've got the quadcopter all strapped down as safely as it can be. These are very tight. They're bungees. Uh, I have done this with ratchet straps before, but I feel like these bungees are strong enough and snug enough. Uh, they are just the right length that when I put them around the desk, they are quite snug. Uh, and I put this little box under here to get a little more tension so there's no room for it to kind of slip around. It's, it's pretty well restrained. So I don't think that's going anywhere. I've got a USB cable here, and I've run the USB cable underneath the bungee, and it's sort of tucked away here so it can't get into the props. The props are all 100% clear. I'm going to run this wire up underneath the bungee so it doesn't get in any way. And basically, we should be able to spin these motors without the copter going anywhere. That's the hope. Let's find out if that's for real. The way to start this is, we're going to start this with the settings that Furious gives you. This is the Furious FPV, uh, uh, OSD slash uh, video transmitter board. They say to start with a scale of 125 and an offset of zero. So we're just going to start with that and see if that's correct. And I'm going to use this clamp meter here to tell me, uh, I'm, I'm going to trust this clamp meter as pretty accurate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the motors tab. I'm going to click this slider and tell a lie. And I'm going to start the motor spinning. While I'm doing this, I'm keeping my finger on the end key of the keyboard because that will be my, my I hope I get out of trouble uh, if anything happens. I can just hit the end key and the, the motors will stop. So let's press up arrow and start climbing the motors. And what I want to do is let's just see if we're pretty accurate down here at the bottom of the scale. And we are, 0 0.4 amps. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can hit about 1 amp. There's 1 amp, looking good so far. So now we're at around 2 amps and you can see that we're starting to get off. It's reading 2.5 on the uh, on the OSD and 2 amps on the clamp meter. And now you can see we're way off. Okay, so it was reading 8.2 amps when we were really pulling 6 amps, 
So that means it is off by a factor of 1.37. We got 125 volts per milliamp. I don't know the exact, but what we need to do is we need to make this number larger to make the amps red go down. So let's just take a shot in the dark and multiply 125 by that ratio to see if the resulting number is gives us a correct reading. We'll go 170. And we'll go to the motors tab. And we will tell a lie. And I'll begin bringing up the slider again. Pretty good. There's one amp. Pretty close. That's a pretty close. Now in order to get this more closer, I need to <laughs> I need to go higher. I need to go to more amps. That is a little terrifying from where I'm standing. Um, here we go, though. There's 20 amps, and that's usually where I stop. Folks, that's where I stop. Uh, it seems to be reading right all the way up to 20 amps within about an amp or two. That's good enough for me. If you really care to, you can take it all the way up to 60 or 70 amps and see if you get off at that point. But for me, usually confirming it around 20 amps is good enough. Well, folks, that's going to do it. That is how you calibrate the current sensor on your Combini. Uh, if the number given by Furious in their video of 125 doesn't produce correct values for you, <laughs> this is the approach you take. As harrowing as it may be, I just don't know of any other way. Um, we got lucky in this case. We got lucky because the offset of zero worked for us. I said before that the offset sets the bottom of the scale, and then the scale number sets the multiplier for the scale, or the slope of the line. So what's going on there is that the current sensor is going to output a certain number of volts when it means zero amps is flowing. And that should be zero volts. But if you get into a situation where, for whatever reason, the current sensor isn't outputting zero volts as the zero amps marker, that's when you've got to use the offset to sort of adjust the, the, the lines together. You'll know that's happening because you'll calibrate the scale. You'll start with an offset of zero, which you should always do. And then you'll calibrate at, like, say, three amps. You'll set the scale so it's correct at three amps. But then when you get up to like 20 amps or 30 amps, it's way off. So then you adjust the scale to make the number correct at 30 amps. And when you get down to like 3 amps, it's way off. And if you can't get it to be roughly correct across the whole slope, probably your offset needs to be changed. The way to get the right offset, and it's really a hassle, but the right way to do it is you set, pull like 3 amps and set the offset to, be, to make the, the current sensor read correctly. Then go up to like 20 or 30 amps and set the scale to make it read correctly. It'll probably be way off. Then go back down to 3 amps and readjust the offset again. Then go back to 30 amps and readjust the scale. And each time you do it, you'll get closer and closer to the correct numbers. It's really a hassle. I've only had to do that once in my life, and it's, it's a real hassle. But eventually, you after two to four iterations, you home in on the correct numbers. But what to do, start with an offset of zero and a scale of 125. Work from there by adjusting just the scale and see if you can get roughly correct numbers across the board. And remember, <laughs> you, you don't need to be down to the one amp or the tenth of an amp. Get it as close as you can, and it'll probably be good enough in the field. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.